Hello and welcome to this review of my IBM Model M Space Saving Keyboard, better known as the SSK. Finally, I get to show you one of these. The SSK is a 10 keyless version of the well-known Model M Enhanced Keyboard, which is possibly the most famous keyboard of all time. These keyboards are fantastic, as I've mentioned in several previous reviews, but they do have one trait that some people find a little bit annoying. It's almost half a meter long. Yikes. By the way, for those who don't know what half a meter is, that's roughly the combined length of 30 imperial penises. The SSK was available as an alternative option on IBM PS2 systems to save desk space with the numpad left off, and as such it's a lot smaller than a full-size M as you can see while still retaining its outstanding buckling spring key switches. It was also available as a specialty keyboard for industries that required a more compact form factor, which is why you can also find them with custom keycaps from time to time. Note that it might be compact, but it's compact for a vintage keyboard, and as such it's actually almost the same width as more modern full-size keyboards, 40.5 centimeters to be exact, and considerably deeper, I guess you can thank the large bezels for that. There is actually a relatively little known successor to this keyboard, the SSK2, which was noticeably more compact and also featured a trackpoint integrated pointing stick, basically one of those laptop nipples. However, that was a rubber dome keyboard and that immediately explains why it's not as well known or popular. Because the SSK was an option rather than the default keyboard that came with computers, and I guess because the numpad was still quite popular back in those days, the SSK is somewhat uncommon, and this, coupled with the high demand for them, means that they usually fetch prices of over $200, while a normal M tends to go for around $50 to $70. This is somewhat ironic, considering that when buying them separately from the system, it used to actually be cheaper than its full-size brother back in the day, $156 in 1992, as opposed to $217 for the big one. And that makes this one, which has also been bolt modded, an even more generous donation, so thanks a lot mate. The board has additionally been ISO modded, which makes it even more desirable, as ISO SSKs do exist, but they're fairly rare, and of course ISO is much better and cooler and more sexy than ANSI anyway. <laughs> Even more rare, and definitely more eye-catching, are the industrial versions of this keyboard, yes, those exist as well, which tend to go for hundreds of dollars. Perhaps the ultimate version is the Mopar keyboard, part number 1395682, which came with some awesome blue keycaps as well. It was part of the Mopar diagnostic system, and presumably they gave it an SSK to make it fit on the system's narrow shelf, which is one of those specialist applications I was talking about earlier. I based my Project M keyboard around its color scheme. It's a black badge, 0th Gen 1388032 Model M, with Wheel Writer Alphas and Unicomp Repros for the Mopar keycaps. Unicomp couldn't reproduce the same color scheme as the originals, these are darker, but they still have front printing and still look excellent in my opinion. Needless to say, this is my favorite Model M. Anyway, the SSK's label, which came to me loose in a CD case as it had been peeled off, but which I managed to gently stick back on, shows that this one is part number 1391472, which portrays that it was originally an ANSI model. It's also quite old, from 1987, which was the first year that the SSK was made in, off the top of my head. You can recognize that as one of the earlier ones from its badge as well. It uses the older grey badge as opposed to the blue badge found on more recent models. Unfortunately, the SSK was introduced too late for any to have been made with the original square metal badge. It weighs 1.8 kilograms, a little bit under the weight of an M's average weight of 2 kilos, that's a shilling's worth of pounds for those of you who are still using Imperial and thus haven't joined post-medieval society yet. It makes sense that it's a little bit lighter than the M obviously, as it's simply a smaller keyboard, but it sports the same outstanding build quality using a tough PVC case, metal backplate and taut assembly, in fact per volume unit I think it might be heavier than a full size M. Also, as this one's plastic rivets have been changed for bolts, it's bolt modded after all, it's one major structural weakness has been taken away, so this one should be good for another couple of decades. Nice. Now, I'm known as someone who likes full-size keyboards, which means that an SSK is kind of an ironic keyboard for me. It's worse, yet far more expensive. I mean, if it were up to me, we'd all be using battleships at a minimum, which are quite a bit bigger than an SSK, as you can see. 
I also mourn the loss of the lock lights a little bit. I understand that because the numpad and therefore the space above it is missing, they couldn't keep them there, but relocating them or putting them in the keys themselves somehow would have been a worthwhile change in my opinion. But still, I went through the usual week of testing to see how well I'd get along with it, and honestly, it's fine. A TKL isn't that small a form factor anyway, so most buttons are still there and where they belong. Besides, I have a backup keyboard for the missing keys anyway, although the one I'm using at the moment is extremely shit. However, what passes for the numpad in this thing I found to be completely unusable. See, the numpad is still technically here, it's just superimposed over these keys here. Normally the keycaps have front printed legends to reflect this, but these are replacement keycaps. In modern space saving keyboards, such lost keys are usually used with layer keys, generally an FN key like this one. However, in the case of the SSK, you used a numlock key instead, so if you were wondering why it had a numlock key, even though it doesn't have a numpad, that's why. Anyway, with it on, these letters output numbers instead, so really you want this turned off by default. So every time you need to output numbers, you need to toggle it on and really off again as well. Now, even that isn't necessarily the end of the world. On XT and AT layouts, that's how I often use it too. However, in those layouts, the numpad still at least has the numbers where you expect them and far to the right, which makes them more accessible to your, or at least my, dominant hand, which is the right one, which I frequently put to use. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But on the SSK, the numpad keys are obviously staggered and in this really awkward position in the middle, and especially if you need to toggle numlock on and off as well on top of that, I think you're faster off just using the number row. It's not like using it is that big of an inconvenience anyway, even I still use those from time to time, especially for smaller numbers. So in other words, this fake numpad is basically absolutely useless. Concluding, if you work a lot with numbers, you probably don't want to use an SSK, but the thing is, it's much easier and cheaper to get a full size anyway, so if you're looking specifically for an SSK, you probably wouldn't mourn the loss of the numpad to begin with. And apart from the change in form factor, at the end of the day, it's still a Model M, with all the perks that that brings to the typing experience. Now, I've commented before, I don't think it's ideal for gaming, don't get me wrong, it's certainly not impossible or anything, for most games it works as well as any other board, but for some games, particularly racing and fighting games I've found, the M's buckling springs just feel a bit sluggish. Also, some other specific games might necessitate more than the two-key rollover that the M offers. Now again, just to get rid of a common misunderstanding, two-key rollover doesn't mean you can't press more than two keys at the same time. It means you can't press fewer than two keys. But most of the time, four to six keys is easily achievable on a two-key rollover keyboard. It's just certain combinations that are blocked. Overall, it's still a great keyboard. I'm sure I wouldn't pay $200 for it, but I can see why some others would. I'll admit it definitely has a thing, a kind of personality or something, a certain je ne sais quoi about it. Lovely. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.